It has been a scorcher of a summer, record high temperatures all over the United States. Huge chunks of glacier the size of four Manhattan islands breaking off in Greenland. One third of Pakistan is now underwater. Fires burning out of control in Russia. Floods in Europe. So is this just another summer on planet Earth? Or is it the apocalypse? Or is it global warming? And whatever it is, how will it affect all of us and our economies? To help me answer these questions, Jeff Sachs, of course, from the Earth Institute of Columbia. Gavin Schmidt is a NASA scientist who studies climate change. And Pat Michaels is a scientist who now works for the Cato Institute, the libertarian think tank that strongly opposes laws to cap carbon dioxide. Welcome, gentlemen. So you. you're the scientist. Um, tell me what we should make of these high temp temperatures. It's always a danger of taking one summer or one data point and it extrapolating from it. But it does seem like a lot of stuff is going on. That's true. And uh, some of the changes that we've been seeing, uh, particularly in the heat waves in Russia, uh, do seem to be very anomalous uh, for a very long period of time. Uh, but you're absolutely right. We have a very hard job to attribute uh, any one single event or even a, a, a group of, of disparate events to uh, something as kind of slow acting uh, but pervasive like, like global warming. So we know that the planet is warming. Uh, this decade is the warmest uh, decade that we have in the instrumental record. It's warmer than the 90s. The 90s were warmer than the 80s. The 80s were warmer than the 70s. There are a lot more warm records breaking than there are cool records breaking. But there's still the same amount of variability from one summer right. to the next summer or, or even from one but, winter to the next all winter. all over time pointing upwards, that is upward rise, and the, the mean temperature is rising. Right. So we think that that's because of the uh, increases in greenhouse gases that uh, industrial civilization and agriculture have put into the atmosphere. And what we anticipate is that because we're continuing to add carbon dioxide to the system, uh, we're going to continue to warm decade by decade by decade. Uh, the exact magnitude of where we're going to go is going to depend a little bit about on the system, but also on the decisions that we make as a society to either reduce carbon emissions or just to carry on as, with business as usual. So that strikes me as the scientific case for global warming. That is that right. it is happening, it is caused by greenhouse gas emissions, and what we do about those greenhouse gas emissions will, will determine how hot the planet gets. Is well, there anything there you disagree <coughs> it's with? It's very clear that the planet's warmer than it was and that people have something to do with it. What you're concerned about is the magnitude and the rate of the warming. And I think it's quite demonstrable that the rate of observed warming is at the low end of the range of projections made by the United Nations. And furthermore, seem, simply saying that one is going to reduce emissions could actually be the wrong thing to do at the moment if you don't have the technology to really effectively do this and to do it globally. What you could wind up doing is spending large amounts of capital that would be dissipated when it could be invested in the future in technologies that frankly you and I don't even know about. So, what do you mean we can do it effectively? We know how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We, we just stop using, uh, you know, uh, uh, fuels that uh, that emit it. It may not be economically p pleasant, but that's different from we, we know we, we know how to do it. We don't have a replacement technology right now right. for we fossil don't have fuels. We simply don't have it. I, I so, agree with that, so, but that's different from saying we don't <coughs> know how to do it. Stop using fossil fuels, and it will and CO two emissions well, will yeah, go down. Yeah, but unfortunately, talks cheap. Yes, you can say you need to do something, but then you have to have a mechanism to do it. Jeff, uh, talk about the point Pat Michaels was making, which is, um, fine, the earth is warming. Human, human you know, industrial activity uh, and agricultural activity is causing it, but we don't really know how to get off the, the fuels, that the, the, the whole way of life that produces these fuels. And so we can, we can mandate all these things. It doesn't, nothing's going to happen. I think what Pat said is absolutely correct, that you need a plan. But we need to get started now because every time we build a power plant today, it lasts for 50 years. So what right. kind of power plants are we going to build? Will we get back to nuclear? Will we capture and store carbon dioxide? How many electric vehicles can realistically be on the road in 5 or 10 or 15 years? These are policy judgments. My view is that the costs of inaction are so frightening for the world, they're beyond our imagining because the world is not good at handling the kinds of shocks that are ahead. They could be devastating for hundreds of millions of people easily. 
They could lead to war, they could lead to famine, and that's not hyperbole, that's a very realistic, hard-headed assessment of what can happen. When you hear all this, d doesn't it worry you? I mean, I understand your position, which is, you know, th we don't have a substitute for, uh, for fossil uh, fuels right now. But surely that isn't an argument for no. stand -patism. You no. do, do, Don't you want to do something about this? What I worry about more is the concept of opportunity cost. <clears throat> we had legislation, again, that went through the House last summer, which would have cost a lot and been futile. And when you, when you take that away, or when, you, when the government favors certain technologies and politicizes technologies, you're doing worse than nothing. You're actually impairing your ability to respond in the long run. And that's my major concern along well, this if issue. You were to have a, if you were to have a carbon tax, or if you were to have a gas, <coughs> gas tax... You can you put would, in the tar carbon tax. No, but you would reduce the consumption of... Uh, that which you tax, you get less of. That which you subsidize, you get more. This is a pretty simple law Correct. of economics, right? So if you, if you, were, to, if you were to put it in, you would get reduced CO2 emissions, and the government would get some money, which you may not think it would spend wisely, but it has the potential to but spend wisely. See the, Why would you be opposed to that? The problem is one of magnitude uh, and, and political acceptability thereof. You know, when, when we had gasoline at $4 a gallon, we reduced our consumption a grand total of 4%. If you're really serious about atmospheric carbon dioxide, you've got to reduce it about 80%. How high, how high does that tax have to be to be 80%? How do you do that but, in but a political that, republic? It's very, very difficult, and I, I guarantee you... But is your that answer, therefore, to do up, nothing? I mean, the, no. Okay, and let me ask you what people wonder about advocates like you. You know, they say... Well, I'm they, they, advocating they, for efficiency. Right, but people say that you're advocating also for the current petroleum-based industry oh, no. to stand pat, to, to stay as it is, and that a lot of your research is funded by these industries. Oh, no, no, no. First of all, what... What I'm well, saying is, is that... Is, that it, is your research funded by these industries? Not largely. The, the um, fact of the matter well, is... Can I ask you what percentage changes, of your work is funded by the petroleum industry? I don't know. 40%? I don't know. Okay. Uh, the uh, fact of the matter is the technology changes dramatically in 100 years. And we will very likely not be a fossil fuel-based economy in 100 years. And the way to get there is to not take capital out of the system but allow people to do investment. But I have your not confident will be around in 100 What's years. That? Your confident will be around in 100 years. Oh, yeah. Right now, it's free to put carbon dioxide up into the air. There's no incentive not to. The cheapest thing in the world is to burn coal. That's true. Okay, that can't be... But that, your, can't be that, that can't be forever. But that can't be your answer also. Of course not. Let me ask you, um, if all this is true, uh, and it doesn't seem there's an agreement on you know, how to reduce uh, CO2 emissions. It, it, su it suggests a fairly bleak future, because we're not going to be uh, uh, it, reducing it, CO2 emissions in the short run. Well, I, I remain a little optimistic that uh, the forces of delay um, will eventually be, be, uh, be put aside. Um, and so I, I don't see it as being a, as a terribly bleak future because, you know, I, 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 I like to think that we're smarter than that. Um, and I'd like to, to demonstrate that societies are smarter than just allowing business as usual to, to carry on. If we do, um, we, we will end up, uh, in, in the phrase uh, of, of my boss Jim Hansen, uh, with a different planet. We will end up with a planet that won't be recognizable in terms of where crops can be grown, that won't be recognizable in terms of where rain is falling, that won't be recognizable in terms of where glaciers are and where ice sheets are and, to put and, that what, in the, human and, terms, and what the sea level uh, is. That's a catastrophic planet, not just a different planet. If we end up with a different planet where people cannot grow food, where people cannot eat, given where they're living right now, we have a catastrophe. And the ironic point is the combination of the technologies we have already in hand and those that are close on the horizon, if we do this sensibly, we can do this at low cost, save the planet and save the economy. But we need a strategy and a plan. That's what we hired the President of the United States for also. That's what we're still waiting to hear from the administration. If we get it, I bet the American people will rally to it. And every time Last we word. threaten an apocalypse and it doesn't happen, we cheapen the issue. Thank you. All right. We're gonna to have to close on that front. Um, we will be right